Okay, so I want to show a quick tutorial of how to use this new Python parse the JSON uh, thing that I just built. And the goal of this uh, project is to um, take Python code and parse it into a nice compact JSON format like this uh, so that you can get an AST, an abstract syntax tree, with all of the start and end columns and lines associated with all the tokens in the, um, and all the nodes in the EST so that you could do further analysis or visualization. So let's start by cloning the repo. So we should probably use HTTPS. We're gonna copy, here's my terminal. I'm gonna get clone. And uh, this should have no external dependencies, hopefully, if I do everything right. So I'm gonna cd into the directory. And uh, the only file here is parse Python to JSON. There's a Python parser module, which I use. Um, I, I took an existing Python parser and I, I hacked it a little bit. Um, it's in the subdirectory. So if you're gonna copy this, you need to copy everything, both the subdirectory and this par parse Python file. So anyways, uh, to use it, you simply um, either pass in a file that you wanna parse of Python code, or you can just pass in a string of Python code, possibly multi-line, onto the command line. So dash dash pi file is for file, and if you just don't use any flags, you get a string. So if you're calling from, say, uh, another app or a web app, you can just pass in a giant multi-line string. You can also, for fun, run it on itself, because again, this is just a Python file. You can just parse itself. So let's try test.py, which is just a um, small Python file. So test.py has some uh, has a doc string in the front, it has some comments, it has an add function defined, it has a slow multiply function defined. This is again a doc string with a doc test, and then it has a bunch of stuff. So there's 30 lines total as indicated down here, and we want to parse it. So to do that, we're just going to run uh, this code right here. Uh, this command right here, copy it on the command line, paste. Okay, so when I run this, I'm going to clear the screen. When I run this, it will uh, print out JSON to standard out. Um, so you can either pipe it to a file, or what I do on the Mac is I do p pipe to pb copy, which copies to your clipboard. So that actually just copies all of this uh, text to the clipboard. So then what I can do is I can go in an online JSON viewer. So I use this one. It doesn't really matter what you use, but it's just convenient for uh, seeing JSON. I just simply paste it into the JSON viewer, and I hit viewer. And I zoomed in here in my browser just so I can show you more clearly. Okay, so this is the JSON structure of the AST. So the first, the top level node in the AST is called a module because the whole, let me just remind you here what test.py is. The whole thing is called a module, right? So this 30 line thing is called a module. Um, the LOC field is always in every node and it shows you the location of the start and end locations of uh, every node. Now, for some weird reason for module, it doesn't do a really good job. So you should ignore it for the module one because it actually only, um, I think, takes the first expression of the module. But uh, let's ignore the LLC for now. Um, every node in your JSON tree has a underscore fields. And what underscore fields is, is that it conveniently lists all of the fields, except for LOC, because LOC is there everywhere. It lists all of the fields you can recurse into, possibly, in order to see more information. So for example, a module only has one field, which is called body. So if I click body, body is a list, and body is a list of three objects. Uh, the three objects, unsurprisingly, are the three things in the module. So if we look, the first thing in the model is, module is simply a string a multi-line uh, doc string. The second thing is an add function definition, and the third thing is a slow multiply function definition. So there are three things, so we can dive in. So the zero thing is an expression, uh, and there's an LOC. So if you look at LOC, start end, uh, starts at line one, column zero, ends at line 12, column three. So imagine one, zero, 12, three. So line one, column zero, uh, the columns are zero index, so it's here, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, uh, line 12 is the ending, and then zero, one, two, and three is one byte off the end of this, uh, off the end of this uh, uh, string. So the, the, the range is really from here all the way down to here, which encapsulates the whole expression, which is a string. Now, note the thing with LOC is that the ending is always an open interval. So the column is always gonna be one beyond 
the actual column you want. So it's actually a half close interval. So this is closed on the left, it includes everything. On the right, it's half open. So just be aware of that so you don't get off by one error. But you should be able to eyeball it pretty well. Okay, so what is this expression? It's, it has, okay, so what does an expression have? You go into fields, an expression has a value. So value is in here, so we can recurse inside. A uh, value is uh, a string, an str, and lo and behold, the actual string contents is in the s field. So strings have an s field. Uh, we go in, and this doesn't. This viewer doesn't display the multiple lines, but this is essentially the full contents of our doc string, which is pretty cool. Okay, so uh, an LLC again shows you the value of the uh, the columns and lines. Okay, let's close this. So we're on the zeroth body. Let's go to the number one. So what is that? That is here. This is the function definition for add, which takes two parameters and returns x plus y. Okay, so what is that? So this is a function def. What are the fields? <clears throat> there are a bunch of fields. There's a function name, args, returns. I don't know what actually returned is. Body and decorator list. So decorator list is empty. Uh, name is here as a string. So the name is add, which is the add function, unsurprisingly. Um, args is all the arguments. So there are two arguments, x and y. So once we get, we can drill down into args, and that itself is called an arguments thing. And there's a bunch of options here, but uh, essentially what you want is, I think, args, and there's a list of two args. The zeroth is x, one is y, and this is why it's really useful to have a um, have a tree view. So notice how everybody has an LOC. This thing has an LOC, this thing has an LOC. Everybody has a nice LOC, which is the location. So for example, the args, LOC is start and so let's do line 15 column 8 line 15 column 12 okay so let's go here this is line 15 because look we're down here line 15 uh, column 8 is 0 uh, 0 index 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 beautiful it starts on the X and the end is a call uh, line 15 column 12 so we're at 8 9 10 11 12 notice how 12 is one beyond the end so really we go from 8 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12 is what we end at, open interval. So the selection is right there. So it's actually really precise. Um, so if we want to know what the, uh, let's zoom out for a little bit. Uh, what is this whole thing? This is a function definition uh, of add. If we want to know the LLC for this whole function, it's actually really uh, cool because the uh, it starts at 15, 0, ends at 16, 16. Okay, so 15, 0 is here. And then 16 is the next line, uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 15, and then 16 is one beyond that. So we know that the add function is these two lines. So again, by looking at the code and looking at the uh, these LOCs, you can determine the ranges of everything. And they're all recursive. They're all contained in each other. So uh, just to finish it up, a function has a body. So if we go inside the body, there is only one statement in the body, and it's a return statement, which is this one, which is on this line, line 16. And then if we go inside, the return has a value uh, because, again, underscore fields means value is the thing we look into. And the value is a binary operation, which is x plus y, right? It's a binary op. And then uh, what do we do here? So the op is an add operation. The left is x and the right is y. So we have perfectly reconstructed the whole AST for the add. And we can do the same thing for slow multiply, right? This is the same thing down here. Uh, the multiply function will be shown in the same way. So this is definition, slow multiply, LOC. Let's look at the LOC for slow multiply. It starts at line 18, column 0. 18, 0, ends at 30, 15. So 18 is here, 0, it's over here. And then 30 is 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 30. Column uh, 15, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 14, and 15 again is one off the end. So we have selected this whole thing. And again, this is all recursive going downward. And you can dive into uh, all of the, uh, so the body of the functions here. And then there's a bunch of expressions. So there's five expressions in the body. So let's look at what they are. I would bet you they are. The first expression is a string, right? Second expression is this line. The third expression is this line. Uh, the fourth expression is this whole for loop, which is its own expression, and the fifth one is a return. So let's look at the fourth one, which is a for loop, which is 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, <laughs> the, the index 3 one. And that, if, lo and behold, is a for loop, right? It's a for, which is this thing. And uh, what does it have? The for goes into the fields. It has 
a body, an L or else an iter and a target. So uh, what is the body? This is the body of the for loop. And the body of the for loop is an assignment statement, which is this uh, here. And then this drills downward as well. So the most important thing is that every node has an underscore field. And by looking at underscore fields, you know what fields are available for you to observe and, uh, and recurse into. Because you notice how every type of node has a different set of fields, right? But if we have an underscore fields thing, we can dispatch on that and recurse inward and handle all the cases. And LOC, again, um, is present everywhere. It's present in all of the nodes. Okay, so that's the normal case. Uh, I can run it on itself. Again, this is going to be giant, but... You can imagine running this parse Python JSON on itself, and this will be gigantic. Uh, I don't think I'm going to go through it manually, but let me reload and try to load it in just to show it works. So this is a giant JSON, right? I mean, you probably don't want to look at this manually. Uh, and if we, if we view it, it's a module. It has a body. It has a bunch of statements now. And if we dive into the statements, actually, most of them are import statements, funny enough. Uh, there is a if statement. There's a class definition. So you can just keep diving downwards, right? It just keeps on going, you know, as deep as you go. Because this tree is pretty complicated because this is parsing literally its own source file, which is pretty huge uh, with a lot of complexities. Um, okay, so what happens when there's an error? So uh, let's, oh, another thing I can illustrate is you can, if you uh, just define a function or do something, uh, write Python code on the command line, you can, you can uh, parse it too. So print hello world. So if you just pass in just a string, it'll just um, it'll just render the string. Uh, sorry, it'll just try to compile the string uh, and parse it. So here's a string. So there's a module. The body only has one statement. This is a print statement. Uh, the values is a string. Hello world. Perfect. We have print. Hello world. So it's actually very small. Um, you can do a multi-line string, right? So if I go this, if I do uh, define foo a b star c or something the next line y equals a plus b next line is return y times c i don't know i'm just making something up i end the thing so this is a multi-line string now notice how it's a multi-line string and when we press enter it all works again and we can do pipe to pb copy and uh, we can see our function here so this is useful for when you want to um so there's one function definition of a foo function there's a bunch of args. Uh, there's actually a, uh, let's see, is there a keyword args? No, this is a, uh, there's a var args actually, right? There's a C, which is a var args because it's a, uh, it's a uh, star right here. But anyways, you can keep diving in. Um, okay, so what happens when you get a syntax error? So let's see what happens. So let's say I write my function and I, I say three return because clearly you can't have an identifier call three return. When I press enter, it will spit out a bunch of stuff to the standard error. It will just uh, spit out an error message. But really what we care about is standard out, which is just this um, this JSON. So I'm going to pipe standard error to delve null, just to silence standard error. So again, I'm running the same thing. There's a syntax error here. I'm piping the errors to, standard, uh, to delve null. So I only see the standard out, which again is a very clean, compact thing. So if I pipe the standard out to PB copy, I'm going to go here. And paste in. So whenever you get a compile error or a parse error, it will give you a type parse error. I just made this up. And then it gives you a message. And this tries, I mean, the messages aren't great, but it's actually better than the default Python message, which is just syntax error we give up, right? So there's a message you can use, but most importantly, there's an LOC, which shows you the range of your syntax error. So this error goes from line three, column three to line three, column nine. This is what you can use to highlight. So line three in this case is, bear with me here, line one, line two, line three, and it's hard to see here, but column zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we don't include nine. So the error is, I think, right here. So it just says, ah, I tried to parse the three. I'm expecting something else, but I get an identifier instead. So I, I blow up. So um, this can happen for a file too. So I'll give you a shorter example. So if I just say, you know, uh, x equals three, this works, right? This is legal Python. But if I say, three equals x, this is not legal Python, right? And, uh, you know, it prints out that a standard error, but really what you care about is the standard out. Uh, so if I pipe this, sorry, if I uh, pipe this to PB copy, then uh, remember this code is three equals x. When I go here, I paste it, oh, whoops, did I not PB copy it? Uh, PB copy, 
when I paste it, it says parse error cannot assign to this expression, which is nice because we can't assign anything to a literal, right? So it gets a parser and the location is uh, uh, 1011, which is uh, which is right here. It just says this expression and, and you know, the error message point out this expression is uh, is funny that way. Um, so anyways, that's a really quick preview of this tool uh, and hopefully you find it useful.